Hi, I'm Peter Nash. Uh, I'm a senior content marketing manager with Hoodoo Digital, a right point company. And I am joined today by Joey Smith, our VP of client enablement and DevOps engineering. Um, here at Hoodoo, we do a lot of AEM implementations. And as part of that, there's always a question that comes up about what's the best method to host this new AEM site that we're going to be getting. Um, so Joey and I wanted to take uh, just a few minutes and talk through some of the options. So Joey, welcome. Um, Thank you. I, I, I thought maybe we could start off with a little bit of a history. Um, so we've been working with um, AEM for um, over 10 years now, um, and we've we've seen things grow um, quite a bit. <laughs> it, it, and change, yeah. Yeah. In, in the early years, I think it's probably, you know, safe to say it was a little bit of a... Um, wild wild west um and uh, there there wasn't a ton of, certainly there was documentation about how how to host and whatnot but there was not there was no integrated structure that existed within the industry that you know said hey here is this is totally the way to do this and um here's how you got to do it and it was often good luck go find your <laughs> own place to to host this and uh, everything should be fine yeah there, there was a lot of documentation definitely provided for customers who had purchased uh, Adobe Experience Manager or even back in the days of DayCQ. But uh, there was not yet a kind of standardized template or way of deploying it. And some IT teams had to go figure it out for themselves. And some, you know, leveraged their implementation partner to say, hey, you know, how do we do this, whether as a managed service or just, you know, we're going to do this in-house and, and we need you to come help us do it. Yeah. And, and thankfully, there has been a lot of maturity over the years um, with Adobe and the, their process for uh, doing hosting. And so let's, why don't we jump into, you know, what there is available today. And we're going to break these down into three basic options. One, which is self-hosting, and that could actually cover uh, even within itself a, a variety of, of options. There is Adobe Managed Services, and then there is AEM or Adobe Experience Manager as a cloud service. And so I thought maybe we could just dive into the uh, sure. uh, the self-hosting model first, um, which those, like, do you want to just maybe explain what a few of those different types of self-hosting could be? Yeah, for sure. The, the obvious, you know, initial entry there is I have AEM, I have servers in my own physical data center or server closet or what have you, whatever you're, organization uses, and I'm going to deploy AEM onto those. That's a, a, a not uncommon way to deploy it. I, I think a lot of people now are more leaning towards the cloud vendors, you know, infrastructure as a service vendors, things like Amazon or Azure, or uh, I, I'm not aware of anybody doing it on Google Cloud, but there's no reason you couldn't. I just haven't run into anybody who does it today. Um, and, and obviously there's there's lots of di variation in between, right? So you could have uh, some people use the like, things like Cloud Foundry or other CNCF projects where it's in my physical location, but it behaves as though it were an AWS or an Azure, an, an infrastructure as a service platform, but running within my own physical hardware. So then the, the there's one additional option there to say, oh, maybe I need to go find a managed services provider. I'm not going to handle this myself. We're not going to do this in-house. We're going to find somebody who specializes in or, or has made a product out of running AEM as a managed service. Uh, there are a few vendors out there. Uh, Hoodoo definitely does that. Uh, I know there are a few of our competitors that do that as well. And, and that's one of the areas where we first kind of started uh, in there is, is doing our own hosting, managed servicing uh, for, for customers. And not long after, you know, a few years into that, Adobe finally started to come in and say, okay, hey, look, we have a method, Adobe Managed Services, that would be, um, you know, we, we, we would have the, the trained personnel who could be able to handle um, this service, and you should use that instead. So do you want to maybe give us a little bit of a, a background of Adobe Managed Services? For sure. Yeah. And, and and I suspect that Adobe Managed Services largely was born out of the same things that caused us to create an MSP back in those early days, which was looking around and saying, you know, we keep delivering these AEM projects where we feel like the engineering 
the the components, the the architecture of the of the site, all that information has been done really, really nicely. And then we fail at the last mile because IT teams out there don't know how to manage AEM as a product. It's significantly different than a lot of the traditional three-tier web architecture stuff that they would be used to. And they're not sure how to optimize it, how to effectively run it and manage it. And so the project ends up failing. And you know it's the product, AEM, that gets a black eye, even though it's really just a lack of you know, infrastructure teams knowing how to manage and operate the platform. So that was kind of where, you know, you and I back in the early days, we identified this gap and we said, hey, we need to just kind of build this. We need to offer to people to take this on when, you know, when or if their internal teams say, yeah, we just, we can't manage this. So Adobe, I think, saw kind of similar projects. They saw, and they, I think they also probably saw that there was fragmentation in the market, different implementation partners who were planning to do this as a MSP had different levels of success. And again, it came, it often came back to AEM, the product ended up looking bad just because of poor operational support uh, on the execution side. And so Adobe Managed Services created a team and they, within Amazon Web Services, they have an Amazon Web Services implementation where you purchase Adobe Managed Services from them. They sell you uh, AEM and AMS together as a bundle. And they work with you to correctly scale and, and size the instances that for what you're going to be doing. And then your implementation partner has to work with Adobe to get access to that platform to be able to do the code deployments and things like that. It is a little bit uh, trickier than, you know, if I if I had the platform myself, if I'm managing it, directly where I can just go in and I have access to every dial and knob that I could ever possibly want to tune and and turn to make things work the way I want. So with Adobe Managed Services, you generally have what's called a customer success engineer, a CSE, that focuses on making sure the platform is healthy. And that can sometimes create a conflict where the engineers that are building the product, the implementation want one thing, the guy whose job it is to make sure the platform stays healthy wants a different thing and figuring out how to negotiate and manage those differences becomes a point of conflict sometimes in those conversations. So as I mentioned, there, there was, you know, a maturity of Adobe experience manager um, over the years and Adobe has finally adopted um, what they have called AEM as a cloud service which makes it possible for the software itself to be kept up to date. Because one of the biggest frustrations that we had seen with people has been, um, I just paid for my license. I just paid for the implementation and I am now a year out of date and I need to update because there's potentially a security flaw or I need to stay up to date um, to with, with the software for uh, licensing reasons. Yep. So m maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, some of the other reasons why AEM as a cloud service is out there and, um, and in general, like what, what its value could be. Yeah. So I think if we start off by talking a little bit about how AEM as a cloud service differentiates from Adobe managed services, that kind of illuminates some of the reasons why, and some of the, some of the things it does. So Adobe managed services is setting up AEM in a cloud provider managed by Adobe, the same way that you or I would set up Adobe managed services for one of our customers as a managed services provider, where we say, you know what, we've got these instances that belong to this customer that are running the product. You know, you have one author and multiple publishers and multiple dispatch publish nodes, multiple dispatch nodes. And that is the way the Adobe managed services platform worked. It was just Adobe being the managed services provider. AEM as a cloud service is a, a fundamental rethinking of the AEM product and how we deploy it. And it's largely built on top of containerization. So things like Docker and Kubernetes. I, I can't disclose for sure that Docker and Kubernetes are the things underlying the way Adobe runs AEM as a cloud service. But we, we definitely know it is some kind of containerization. And the idea is that there are 
there's a very large cluster of AEM authors and published nodes and dispatchers that are being run by Adobe. And all the customers are in a shared cluster. So you you have your own version of AEM. It is it belongs to you. You're only seeing your data and your deployment stuff in there, but the actual compute resources are shared across all customers. So this allows Adobe for sure to give things like economies of scale on the compute that underlies Adobe Experience Manager. And it also allowed them to start to build around some automated deployment and and policies and practices to say, you know, if your code is going to get deployed, it's going to go through this product now called Cloud Manager. That's a, an Adobe platform that they created and it does things like quality checks on the code before it gets deployed to make sure that you're not going to take the cluster down or you're not going to create other issues in the inside that cluster before that code gets deployed. So it's really about rethinking the way we scale and provide AEM. So for example, if I'm a customer that's, let's say, 360 days out of the year, I get a couple thousand users to my website. But there's these five days where we have a customer convention or you know, a, a big meetup with all of our customers. And in those five days, my traffic grows by 100,000 times for those five days. In a traditional managed services provider or an on-prem instance, or even as Adobe managed services, you have to manually resize your compute nodes, or you have to always be running with so much excess capacity the other 360 days out of the year that you can handle those five days without having to go through and, and resize those nodes. With AEM as a cloud service, because it's all on-demand and container-based, you say, oh, you know what? All of a sudden, the traffic amount started going up. It, the platform automatically self-heals and spins up more compute resources in that large cluster dedicated to that customer who's having their five-day ma massive event. Gotcha. So I think this actually is a good you know, chance for us to now maybe shift back in your, uh, a little bit and, and say, how do we answer the question for our customers which is the right one? What's the best thing for me? And I think obviously our answers are going to be, it depends on the situation that you are in. Yep. Um, but I, I think there's probably some, you know, base questions that we can ask about each one of these different options. So if we start talking about the self-hosting um, option, you know, wh what are the license requirements? Because, you know, when you purchase um, AEM, you're, you're purchasing a license to the product for, for a specific amount of time. Um, you know, it, are there implications for if you choose to um, self-host? Um, and it, it, does this mean you're eligible for any of the support that follows on with it? Okay, let, let's talk about that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, it, I think it's been about two years now that uh, Adobe has stopped selling licensing for self-hosting. They no longer offer it as an option. Um, there are people who are grandfathered in, people who had purchased Adobe Experience Manager before this cutoff date that they put out there that have access to a self-hosting license. But as of, you know, kind of the AEM as a cloud service going primetime, Adobe just said, you know what, this is how AEM is provided now. And it's it's definitely made their jobs a lot simpler to do that. So it's one of those cases where if you have a self-hosting license, you probably know it because you actually have a license key to AEM. Uh, you, when you purchased AEM, you, it had to have been more than a couple of years ago, and it had to, you would have received an ac access to the Adobe licensing portal, and it would have actually had a place where you can go log in and get a license code that tells you, yep, this is your AEM self-hosting option. You know, This is the license key you have to put in in order to run it. With that license, um, then, and, and understanding that, so there are those organizations that are still existing out there who may be self-hosted. How do they keep up to date with the software? If if what I hear you saying is, um, you know, Adobe is controlling how a lot of this stuff gets, um, how their code gets pushed out there anymore, how do they stay up to date? Yeah, so there there is a uh, a mailing list that you can subscribe to. 
where Adobe provides the security patches and service pack information, hot fixes as they become available for customers. You will have a login to experience.adobe.com where you can go in and it'll show you what they call their software distribution center. And you'll actually be able to see which which hot fixes and which service packs you have access to at that point. So if you don't have a current service contract with them and a new hot fix comes out, they will not show that hot fix to you potentially within that uh, software distribution center. So you you download those. Those are generally distributed for the most part as zip files that you download, and then you deploy them into AEM the same way you would a code release or a content package. They go into your AEM instance, and they're deployed. And occasionally, it actually requires restarting AEM itself, depending on you know what the what features or changes have been made inside that that service pack. Um, so sometimes it'll actually, you, you end up having to stop AEM and restart it. But for the most part, you just deploy it as a content package after you've downloaded it from Software Distribution Center. So for the organization that is trying to decide whether or not to use this method, obviously they're going to be limited in, okay, I, you know, I, I either have the key or I don't. Right. Um, and, but if they do have that, like, what, what's the consideration? Like, why would they choose to use a self-hosting model instead of just u- utilizing um, the system that Adobe has set up? Probably the most common reason I see for people choosing to do self-hosting for those who have that option is that they either have some kind of regulatory or legal compliance issue around where their data can actually go. Uh, so, for example, if you were let's say a bank um, you might not be allowed to ship some of that data outside of your data center it might not you know it might be li- literally against the law for you to do so in which case then you have to say all right you know we've got this data center let's let's either hire or contract with some outside agency to run AEM as a self-hosted option either within our own private cloud or we have, do have a public cloud that we have, you know, special exception to. So, so usually it's it's privacy rules, it's compliance regulation, things like that. Um, there are some people occasionally that make that decision. You know, I'm I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna say just because. Like I, you know, when when I talk to the IT department, I'm like, why are you guys doing this? You know, what, let me help let me help you make sure this is the right decision. And they're like, well, that's just that's just how things are done here by policy, right? Um, that's that's okay. I personally would say in those cases, you probably want to find a partner to contract with to be the escalation path because there's not a lot of organizations out there that are going to really take the time to set someone aside to become a deep expert in AEM and to be able to say, you know what, if it's doing something unexpected, can we solve it? Can we get to the bottom of why and and get to a resolution? And that's where your implementation partners and and those MSPs that I've mentioned, you know, that are out there, a- including Hudu Digital, are able to come in and say, you know what, we can either be staff augmentation or we can come in and we can run it for you. We can help you when you're just, you know, we're just a lifeline that you reach out to and you're really stuck. But I, I'd recommend you at least have something, somebody, unless you really are saying, you know what, we're just going to take a guy or two guys and we're going to let them just be AEM experts. And that's all they do all the time. Uh, outside of that, I'd say you probably should have some kind of escalation path outside of your organization. Speaking of escalation path, it, do they do people in those situations not have access to Adobe support? Yeah, you can contact Adobe support, but in a lot of cases, Adobe support will look at the the incident. And if it's not a problem inside the product itself, Adobe support's ability to help you becomes a little bit limited. Uh, And unless you've got some kind of professional services arrangement with Adobe, they probably aren't going to go read your Java code and figure out what you've done that caused AEM to have some kind of issue. Let's say it went down or... You know, you're running into conflicts when you try to make changes to a page. Whatever the whatever the deep underlying issue is, Adobe can maybe potentially point you to say, well, you know, we, we found this error. This is in your code. Good luck. Whereas an implementation partner or a managed services provider will 
usually be a little more hands-on and the okay, let's get on with the developers and let's talk through, here's what I found. You guys tell me what you know about the problem. I'll tell you what I know about the problem. And between the two of us, we can collaborate and usually get to a result. Great. So let's talk about Adobe uh, Managed Services then. The similar questions, uh, you know, what, what are going to be the license requirements and, uh, you know, how are people eligible to be able to use this and why would they choose to use this? Sure. So uh, Adobe Managed Services is uh, an option that is available to people who have that self-hosting option. Again, they have to have purchased before the uh, the go-to-market of AEM as a cloud service. And they have a license and they, they're saying, you know what? I want Adobe to be my managed services provider. A lot of people that are choosing that, it was part of the initial negotiation of their AEM deal. So the, you know, Adobe said, well, you know, if you purchase AEM and you purchase it with managed services, then then maybe we'll increase your discount or something like that. But it ultimately comes down to you still have access to a license. You, somewhere you can actually get to your AEM license. And that was provided to your CSE at Adobe to actually do the deployment, but you do still have that. You know, if I if I really needed to and I was able to work out the contract terms with Adobe appropriately, I could potentially divorce myself from AMS as the provider and bring it in-house if we needed to. Obviously, that's not a path that we necessarily want to see anybody go go down. You know, if you're if you're working with AMS, there's probably a good reason for that. You know, at some point in time, you, they, they looked like a good option to you. And and we will generally try to help people manage and, and negotiate that relationship a little better rather than tell them, let's just burn the house down and, and get out of AMS. So I, I suspect that the the method to, you know, stay up to date um, with the product is going to be very similar to self-hosting where there's, you know, going to be a package that gets downloaded. In, in the past, when I had worked with Adobe Managed Services, there was usually the CSE who was saying, hey, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the latest package is now here. When can we install yes. that? They were always pushing to try and make sure that that was, you know, the latest code was getting pushed out there, you know, not just for security reasons, but also for, you know, here's the latest features that will be available to you. Is that is that correct? That it's, That's still the, the process? Yeah, so I, I, I don't, know of anybody who has AMS today who actually is able to go out themselves and download patches from the software distribution center, their CSE is providing those to them. Um, so that is one of the main differences between the self-hosting option and the AMS option is that if your CSE is getting those patches, you probably don't have a place to go download them for yourself. But your CSE will contact you and say, you know what, there's, there's this version that we're trying to get out. And, you know, they have they have a lot of reasons, as you mentioned, some of those reasons for wanting to do that. A big piece of it is consistency. You know, if, I, if I'm an Adobe CSE and I've got 10, 15 customers, I want them all on the same version of the product. So if something goes haywire, it goes haywire the same way across the board. So they, they will have some pressure on their end to try and encourage their customers to get onto a given patch version. So if a service pack comes out, usually within a couple of weeks of the service pack being released, your CSE will reach out and say, hey, you know, here, here's here's when we're going to cut over or we need to make a plan to get cut over to this new service pack. They'll often deploy it to the non-production lanes and say, let me know if you guys see any problems. And if we don't see any problems, then we'll just set a target date for deploy to production. All right. So let's cover the, the final um, uh, AEM is a cloud service option. Does it seem fair to say what are the license requirements? Because it sounds like you're always kept up to date. Um, and yes, how do you get on to that? Yeah, yeah. So the, okay. So the, the first piece of, of how do you get onto there is today when you buy AEM, it comes with AEM as a cloud service. That's just how it comes. That is your only option anymore. Um, as far as you know what what your sizing is and how much capacity you have within that AM cloud as a cloud service deployment that will be part of the negotiation with your initial purchase of AEM. Uh, it will come through with the cloud manager product that we mentioned earlier. And that cloud manager is a very key component of how you stay up to date in an AEM as a cloud service world. The people who are looking in your cloud manager instance, they will see, hey, you know what? There's a pending update for 
this uh, stack or environment or lane, whatever you know, whatever term you want to use for that. So you're looking at there, you see your non-production, your dev instance, and it'll have a little button that you have to click, and it says, "Okay, I'm now deploying the newest version of the code," and it will run through. And a lot of times you'll find that. Well, I won't say a lot of times. Sometimes you'll find that when you click on that, you know, go to the newest service pack, it comes back and says, you know, your code that three months ago passed muster on our security gates and our code quality checks doesn't today. And so you have to go find what changed. And then, you know, there will be some kind of uh, patch release notes that you'll have to go through and figure out what is the thing in here that has changed that now we need to go conform to in our code because Adobe, as part of that, evergreen process you know once you're on am as a cloud service you get the updates all the time but you know if they have changed the policies they've changed the procedures you just have to get in line with that and there's not a whole lot of there's no flexibility on on adobe's side right to say well you're not you know we're not going to do that patch just because you're not ready for it it's yep it's here and it needs to go live and 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 that can create some issues for development teams. We've definitely seen engineering teams scrambling to respond to a change in the in the policies. And like I said, you know, well, three months ago we were able to deploy this code just fine. Today, when we try to deploy it, it fails, and somebody has to go through and figure out why. Uh, that that I think is is one of the biggest uh, selling points for AEM as a cloud services: the fact that you know you are always kept up to date, and and there is no longer this looming oh great i'm i'm two versions behind and I've, i'm gonna have to go through a massive um recoding and uh implement re-implementation process to get uh, myself up to date which is you know a, yeah. a, a big sigh of relief for a lot of organizations because you know there was you know uh, the removal of a big cost that you know it was was ever present and and now that can be alleviated in in a in a much uh, simpler way. Yeah, the, the, I think I think the other really big factor that really kind of changes people's minds a lot, even people who are currently can choose self-hosting. When we talk to some of those customers and we say maybe it's time for you to look at AEM as a cloud service, one of the factors that we we often raise is AEM as a cloud service has largely reached its end of feature life cycle. Uh, AEM 6.5 continues to receive product updates for security patches and, and minor feature updates and things like that. But whenever you go to, let's say you go to uh, Adobe Summit and you see the new features and the new you know, Adobe Sensei integrations and things like that, a lot of those things you will find Adobe tells you some of these things are only available to AEM as a cloud service customer because uh, they natively require that cluster and that that kind of always on and auto scaling feature set uh, you know it's built in it's a built in assumption now that that is what the majority of the customers are going to be running and so some of the stuff can't readily be migrated back to the AEM 65 product line and they have, they've officially said AEM 6.5 is the end of the line for the self hosting on premise version of of AEM there will be patch updates continue to be released for the foreseeable future. We haven't been given an end date on that yet, but uh, there's, you know, they're, they're no longer focusing their product engineering on that version of the product and all the focus is on AEM's a cloud service. So if you want the the really cool new stuff that's coming out, AEM as a cloud service is, is where you got to start considering. Yeah. It, it seems as though like, you know, for the, you know, future proofing yourself, like th that seems like the better choice for an organization to make. But again, there could be reasons why you might not want to go that route. And and we certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to make a blanket statement that said, hey, whatever you're doing, stop and go on to AEM as a cloud service. Um, there would need to be some considerations there. Yeah. And, and even if you are in self-hosting today, and even if you check all the boxes when you look at AEM as a cloud service, you say, yep, that for us, that is the way to go. It's not always necessarily just a, a really simple, well, we just deploy our code to AEM as a cloud service. Because AEM as a cloud service is 
run in this containerization platform, there are some changes that usually need to happen to code to say, oh, we can now play nicely in kind of that shared space world. And that's where you look to your implementation partner for help to say, hey guys, you know, we're we're considering AM as a cloud service. Does this feel like the right fit to uh, for us from your perspective? Why or why not? And if so, you know, what are the boxes that we have to check in order to get there? Uh, Joey, if someone were a Hudu customer, how would we go about um, helping them? Yeah, so uh, uh, like I said, a, a big part of it is looking at what your requirements and your policies and your practices are as an organization. And Hudu has, as we mentioned a few times, we, we work in all three of these platforms, right? So if you are self-hosting, whether you're actually physically doing that on-premises or whether it's in a, a public cloud or you're looking for a managed services partner, those are places that that Hudu has built a strong market presence and, and we're happy to assist and advise and consult with you on, on getting you to the right division there and figuring out what's what's the right, you know, division of labor here. How how can Hudu help you best without, you know, going going overboard and just always saying, yeah, just let us handle everything. You know, we want to be very collaborative and and work work with you to decide what the best is for your organization. For those people that are Adobe Managed Services customers, they often find that it's helpful to have a, a third party that that plays in there with the, that space to say, you know what, I need somebody who kind of represents the customer's interests, but knows the AEM platform as well as the Adobe Managed Services guy does in order to represent the customer correctly to their AEM C or their, their Adobe CSE. And that's a place that that Hudu plays for a lot of our AMS customers. We will have a, a dedicated person on their account that lives and breathes their environment that knows as much about it as if we were the managed services provider. But Adobe is the managed services provider, and we just tell them, hey, you know, in consultation with the customer, here's what we need to have happen next. Here's where we need to go with this next. Then the last piece is uh, on the AEM as a cloud service platform. That is a place where I think most people probably are going to want an implementation partner. Uh, it is a constantly evolving platform. It changes a lot. And it's I, we, we found that it's very difficult for internal teams to really be able to focus on and keep up with the rate of change that AEM as a cloud service introduces to the platform. And that's a place where that Hoodoo specializes as a I, I, I use the word specialized. We are a specialized partner that uh, has made it kind of our bread and butter to help our customers get up on AEM, regardless of what platform you're on, from self-hosting through AMS all the way to AEM as a cloud service. We are here and, and available to help and happy to have anybody reach out and say, you know what, we just want to start a conversation and figure out where is the best place for Hudu to assist us. Thanks very much for uh, taking the time to share some of your expertise and um, experience in, in working in these hosting solutions. If, if people have any questions, please feel free to reach out through um, our website and we'd be happy to help uh, answer any questions or uh, discuss your specific needs.